in creating the right touch to this Western still life. I had the pleasure of working the still life with an artist from California called Bill Blackman. And we had a lot of fun doing this type of uh, technique pattern. And so I'd like to share that with you today. And what we're going to do is go up to the canvas and I'll show you how I pre-prepared the canvas to get some of the detail work already established. So up on the canvas, we have, I have a pattern drawing that I designed, and it has a little bit of instructions on it, but I've taken the pattern using graphite tracing paper and located the pattern on the canvas. I've already done this to save time, and of course I used a pencil or a stylus and traced over all the lines. To, after I got the pattern established, I used a Sharpie pen or a uh, permanent marker pen to go over the design in the, in the, uh, the jugs. We don't want to go around the outer lines, just the inside lines to darken the, uh, the black lines and the pattern. I used an orange Sharpie, just coloring it in like you would uh, if you were just using uh, magic markers on paper, and block in. And this remains permanent, and it's really going to actually show through and work for us in the painting. You can design your own uh, picture or vase, and you'll find that uh, this is a real fun way to do it. It's going to save me a lot of time in trying to achieve this painting in 26 minutes. So now that we have our pattern established and we have a guide, we're going to start blocking in the background area. We'll go down to the canvas, uh, to the palette, and we'll start working with a little bit of premix. And I've used a little bit of my basic white, which is my soft, creamy white, and I have some of the uh, yellow ochre with a tiny speck of blue in it. And I've premixed up a little batch of this and a little dish to come over to the canvas, and I'm going to work around the design, blocking it in with a filbert brush. Now a filbert brush has a little stiffer bristle and I'm using the filbert so I can go around the outer edges of the detail a little more slowly. Then I'll switch back to my one inch brush. This has a little better chisel edge and allows me to work a little more carefully in tight spots. So you have to pick and select a brush that will make it easier for you to uh, apply the paint uh, for the type of area that you're working in. I'm going to go ahead and block in fairly quickly. I'm also going to go over shadow area. I went ahead and used a little bit of pencil to extend some lines and to locate the shadow areas just as a guide. <clears throat> and then I used a fixative spray. Now a fixative spray sets your pattern and it won't smudge and mix with your paints. Still shows through the paint just a little bit, but you can see that it really doesn't mix in as much. I'm painting the background of the wall. We're going to try to create some stucco and plaster on this uh, wall and you can see that the creamy color blocks in easily. We'll switch now to a larger brush to save time and uh, use the one inch. This just gives a uh, easier coverage and a quicker blockage. I'm kind of pushing the paint into the pores of the canvas and I've used my basic white to allow for the easy move of the paint. As I go into the area where I plan on having shadows on the wall from some palms that are not in the composition, uh, I use a little less paint. This will allow the paint, the dark colors to show through. So this is going to go fairly quick once I get the mass of these areas or the positioning of the uh, foundation colors blocked in. That's our first step in locating the back wall. We're going to add to this mix a little bit of Van Dyke brown and a touch more blue. Now I've also pre-mixed that. Could mix right into this existing color, but down on my palette you'll find that I've got a darker mix of this brown, and I'm even going to add a little more Van Dyke to the brush to make sure it's a little umber in it to block this in on this side. So I'm blocking in the shadowed side of the wall. Now once again, I'll go back to that uh, sh stiffer bristle brush to go on, on the line. Sometimes I even find it easier to turn the canvas. Since I'm working a little backwards here, let's hope I can get a straight line to that wall. We'll just slide right down in and I use the edge of the filbert to allow me to have that edge line a little more carefully applied. Okay, as I get down towards the baseline of the wall, I want it to be a little darker. So I go back down to my palette, picking up a little more of my Van Dyke and Umber. Sometimes I use one, sometimes I use both, and I'm going to block this in and allow the colors to mix as it comes up out of the shadow. Notice I try to work fairly carefully around the pot and block it in. So now we have the shadowed side of the wall roughed in. Sometimes down in your shadow areas, it's nice to have a little extra cool reflective lights. A little touch of blue will create a little more interest. So while I have this brush working, I'll add a touch of Prussian into the brush. 
then go back up and down in this area and you'll find that cool blue we'll just add some maybe uh, other type of cast shadows and interest back in there and just kind of pat it in and let it work in loosely we want a good striking contrast between the two areas if that line is a little hard I can always take a different brush maybe a clean fan brush and I can streak down over just enough to kind of soften that line like that and I want to turn the brush over to the other clean side and that keeps that from being too hard and harsh a line and gives a little more depth to it let's go back to that filbert brush just for a minute with some more of that shadow color that we had already pre-mixed on the palette as I come back up this pot I'm going to have my light source coming in from my right and this pot will cast a shadow on the wall so I'm going to go ahead and bring this cool brown shadow color in right next to the pot and kind of give a little silhouetted reflection and notice I allow it to mix and the shadow to soften as it comes out away from the object your more light filters around it so you will naturally have a softer edge shadow wipe the brush occasionally if your paint's moving too easily you need to wipe it got a little extra blue in there and soften just kind of pat and you can shape it to the general shaping form of the existing object okay that pretty well blocks that in so we need to think now of the shadows let's go up on the right portion of the canvas up towards the right and we're going to use that same color mix on your uh, filbert bristle and we're going to come in and create some palm shadows on the wall and i'm just kind of scrubbing them in loosely trying to design them slightly you can spend more time on this i'm allowing them to be kind of light at first then i will darken the shadows because those shadows are uh, have different values in them because the object is usually at different distances from the surface so we'll have strong shadows and light shadows so i'll go in reload the brush making sure my color value is much richer or darker adding either Van Dyke or Burnt Umber. Sometimes I like the shadows to have more warmth, and then other times I like them to be cooler. So now you can see that value is richer. And sometimes I just pull down little frond effects. Just having a nice time creating some little shadow patterns. These are not the actual fronds. You could take time and create the actual fronds and paint them also. But with my light source direction, I want to keep this from getting too busy. And I need a lot of time to work on the detail. So already I have kind of a shadow pattern interest. If I find it necessary, I can go back, strengthen that, add more color, and develop it farther. I think I will, just one more time, add a little more brown with a touch of blue to the brush. For a little richer, I like value. So let's go up to the canvas and just do it one more time with a few stronger shadows. Just put the paint on a little bit, and then I'm just brushing it with that filbert brush to design it. Overlapping, try not to follow the same pattern. You could even take a brush and softly blend this because your shadows sometimes have soft edges. <clears throat> Other times you have a hard line shadow. Okay, that pretty well blocks in a, a foundation to work on. To create interest in the uh, stucco, let's use a little bit of a fan brush with a little bit of thinner. Now I'm gonna dip my brush into some thinner. Come down to that dark mix that I had. And I'm going to do some spatter painting. Spatter painting is a lot of fun. Sometimes it can be messy, especially if you pull the brush the wrong way. But I want to create a little texturing around the outer edge, as if there's little bits of sand and stucco. And I'm just pulling back away from the canvas. Make sure you don't pull away from yourself. And putting these little dots or speckles of uh, grains in the, in the stucco. I'm going to do it on the dark side. You might not see it as much. And the thinness of the paint allows it to kind of bleed in. I'm going around the object. If you get a few dots in there, you don't have to overly concern yourself with them because they will uh, brush in when we repaint that object. Sometimes I just do the dark. Other times I will repeat and do some light. So it almost looks like the stucco has kind of a sparkle to it. Depends on exactly what you're trying to achieve. Let's do a little bit with the thin down white. Okay, a little bit of the light color. You might not even notice it, but it's nice to have that little extra sparkle in there. Not too much in the shadows. Okay, if you get somewhere you don't want it, just take a clean, dry brush and gently wipe it. Very gently, and that will dissolve that paint in so it does not put uh, paint in an area. I'm going to use a clean filbert brush. Sometimes I choose and select a uh, fan brush to work with, but this particular time I'm going to use a filbert with a little bit of thinner in it and a little yellow ochre, and we're going to block in the coloring in the base for the moment. 
This will allow that thinner time to evaporate and it'll set up and then I can go back and work in a little more. What we're using is basically a wash of color, which is very thin paint, that's thinner, and then you have your uh, mixture of ochre, and that's all I'm using, just a little ochre, and we're going to block in over the existing. And I think you'll see how interesting it is how our design shows through. We don't lose it completely, but it will tone it down and it will not have the strength of the effect. As I come towards my light source area, I allow the paint to be thinner. Now for the time factor, I am putting paint over the existing pattern. Notice the chisel edge of this brush, how it allows me to work a little more rapidly than a one inch or a fan, but those brushes will also work. Just blocking in, hopefully keeping my sh basic shape, staying within my guidelines. You can make the, uh, the containers different colorings if that was your choice. If you get too much pigment, take a paper towel, wipe it down. That'll also create a highlight. Paper towels are very, very handy for uh, changing the application of paint. So I've blocked in that one, and this is just a thin wash of color. Oops, bumped into the shadow line. Let's bring it back out a little bit. Repeat the load of the brush, starting on the shadow side with the more richer pigment, and slowly working over on the other side. Now notice I don't try to go around the, the coloring of the design. I could repaint that and go back over it with my oil paints and just use it more as a guide effect. If you want to, you could go around and just paint and avoid working in your, uh, over your pattern, but I find for this time factor, I really need to work a little more rapidly. Or take a paper towel and just kind of slide it. See how that pulls the paint off and brings the vibrancy of the color back up? So you can just kind of wipe out type of effect. Okay. Oops, I wiped out a little too much, so we have to reapply. Allowing this paint to set up for a few minutes, the thinner does evaporate quite rapidly. It will allow your paints to definitely sit uh, and adhere to the canvas more, and then you can mix into it a little more easily. I think I'm going to add a little bit of alizarin crimson, or sometimes I prefer cad red, into my ochre mix, and I'm going to strengthen on the shadow side a little more warmth. I'm going to come and bring the left edge of the pot up with a little more of a red home and just brushing it in letting it mix with the ochre on the left side of both the little containers there we go wipe the brush occasionally and allow it to just kind of blend in now we don't want too much inside the pot once again keep a paper towel handy and wipe occasionally when you want to take a little uh, of the color off locking in very well, actually very freely. I'm trying not to get too hung up on the color changes and allowing it to mix. That warms up that left side. These earth tones really help create the mood of this painting. That's very nice. And you can always develop your shadows. Maybe even a little of that umber in there will, will make that side of the pot look more in shadow. So I rub a little umber in and really strengthen that. This helps separate and push this uh, container back and bring this one forward. It's a pottery container. And I had a lot of fun trying to design my own type of container with the pattern. And uh, this is the nice part that you can do is you can find pictures. I have a couple of different pictures that I've uh, picked up of Mexican pottery that I like to use for reference. So you can have fun using your own reference pieces. In the container itself, we want to try to, now I'm using the dry brush to kind of lift off some paint and bring them some light back up where I feel the light would hit. I could use white, in fact, I think I will. Put a touch of white on the brush, this is my titanium, and come up and bring a little bit more light up on the rim of the vase and where I feel the light would hit. Now we could wait and do this later after the paint sets up, but I thought I'd go ahead and put a touch in so you can see that you can continually work the paint and add more paint. Even a little light right on the orange color. Shadow is one of the most important things that you can capture in a painting to bring up uh, your objects alive and give them form. So I'm going to use the same brush and go back with a little bit of the umber brown mix on the brush. Once again, using this filbert brush. The number 16 would work, but you would find you would wear it out more quickly. So I find that it, uh, I prefer a little stiffer brush when I'm working with this. I'm going to create a cast shadow inside the, the lid of the container. This helps me kind of straighten it back up. 
making it richer in the darkest area, and go over some of the penciled over lines that I had. Now, I don't have to, but it sure does create more depth, more vibrancy. And this is what I'm hoping to uh, achieve in a very short time. Let's leave the containers for a moment to allow that paint to set up a little more. And let's go down to the sand that we're going to capture in this uh, particular painting. Uh, this one was originally was done on brickwork, and it was beautiful, but I just knew I would never get that achieved in a short length of time of these uh, uh, sessions. So we, I created a sand bot bottom for the pots to be sitting into. I'm using a little bit of white. But before I get into that, I really should just use a wash of my burnt umber. Now, wash is thinner, and your burnt umber mixed together into kind of a thin coffee-like consistency. And we're going to go up underneath the con container and just kind of block in this coloring, getting the sand base established. You will still see your pencil lines through it, which is fine. And that gives us no problem at all seeing the pencil lines, because we just add more paint and paint over them. As we go underneath the object, I'm going to continually block in, and I'm using the fan brush. The filbert at this stage won't cover quite as easily, so you have options. Either brush, even the one inch, would be sufficient, but the fan brush keeps me from getting a little too tight with the detail. Let's go back under the background distance, making sure I cover all the raw canvas. So you can even get a sharp line with that fan brush if you watch the edge of it. Now, we're going to lighten some of this. Notice how I just kind of scrub it in. The sand is going to have a flat surface, so a lot of your strokes could be horizontal. Let's thin that just a little thinner, and watch how the color weakens. Locking in continually. Sometimes I use a paper towel, and I'll blot to create little interest movements in the sand. That way, you end up having a little less tightness in your painting. But then if you want it to go into a strong detail painting, then that's your uh, prerogative to go ahead and work that area with more detail. OK, let's add some white to that. Now, the sand I want to capture should be nice and warm. So we're going to just use the wipe the fan brush out, go down to either basic or titanium. I kind of have a mixture of both here. And what, what I'm allowing is the paint to move fairly easily. If it's too sticky and doesn't seem to come off your brush, add your basic white, which is your softer white. Then come up to the canvas, and let's just kind of brush in some light areas. And look how it mixes with that wet, soft paint and create some light spots on the sand. Just nice, flowing, intermixing strokes. Wipe the brush if you pick up too much paint. Reload with a little more white, and then come up. Keeping the paint and not applying an excessive amount of paint makes it uh, work very well to where you can build on it. If you put a lot of heavy, heavy paint on initially on your canvas, you're going to find, as you try to add additional uh, objects to your canvas, that you get lost in the paint. And so I find that it's not uh, uh, to your best interest to put the paints on too heavily early. Build slowly, and that way you'll stay in control. OK, I need to create a little more of that shadow. I'm adding a touch of blue to my brown, and naturally, the two containers are going to cast a shadow, so I've kind of left that dark anyway. Putting a little coolness over here and pull that shadow off to the right. Maybe even a few shadows, we'll put some sand in. Actually, what I'm looking for is color variety, and I like that little interest. So maybe those palm fronds not only cast a shadow up here on the wall. Let's go up here on the wall here so you can see. On those shadows up there, we could also repeat those down on the sand. So I'm going to take maybe that same coloring and maybe put a few little patches of shadows down on the ground. This is where it's a lot of wonderful fun, and I think I'm going to have time to maybe take a liner brush and take one little shadow, and this is a fun way to do it. I'm going to put the shadow on the wall, and then when I get into the grasses, you'll find that I can put the piece of grass that's casting the shadow. And let's, let's show you how that cast shadow will work. This is thinner with a little liner brush and Van Dyke brown and a touch of blue, quite fluid. And I'm going to come up to the canvas. And there's going to be some grasses and some interest down here in the sand. But before I do that, I have to make the sand. But I want to do the shadow. I'm going to plant the little piece of grass right. Oh, maybe there's a piece over here, too. The shadow is going to go over the surface of the sand. And then it's going to kind of come up the wall and have that. That should have a little more blue in it. It's a little dark. But I'll show you how we soften that. Let's just bring a little more paint and a little more blue and have a couple of little shadows on the wall. 
that run down across the sand. Now that may look a little funny at this point. To soften them, just kind of smudge them gently with your fingers. Remember soft edge shadows usually are a little nicer. Now that we have that shadow that goes over the surface and up, I think that's a little harsh. Let's just touch it with our finger. Weaken the shadow just slightly. And then when we put that piece of grass in, in a moment, you'll see what I was trying to achieve. Okay, that uh, stick could be off the canvas also, but we're gonna put him and plant him right there so you can actually see how that shadow pattern plays such an important role. Also, that same dark coloring is important to create a separation down at the bottom rim. I have pencil lines in there that show, but I can bring a little of that darker color in and once again, soften it in just slightly. Even that takes off a little bit of the light color and lightens it in a few spots. And that helps set the pot down a little more. I'm even gonna pull up a few little grasses out of the shadows to break that. This is the fun part. This I could probably spend a whole show doing all the little detail work, but I think you can get the basic effects and then develop it yourself. I'm going over here on the very right edge of the pot in the shadow to create a better contrast. Maybe re reshape, if I got out of my line, I can reshape. And I'm gonna go right around that little ellipse up here and make sure my contrast is good there. Okay, it's beginning to sh uh, shape up fairly quickly. The grasses, before we wanna do those, we wanna go back and maybe try some spatter painting in the sand. I still like either an old used toothbrush, that's handy to keep in your paint box, but a fan brush has got a stiff bristle and it'll work quite well. So I'm gonna use the Thin Down Dark Mix. You could add a touch of blue, Van Dyke, Burnt Umber, just something good and dark, quite loose and fluid. You can get it too thin, so you have to be careful you have enough pigment. Come down here on the bottom and do a little bit of that sandy speckling down on the bottom. Now this is where you wanna be a little more careful and not go into your pot, so kinda of aim down. Point the corner in the direction you want the paint to be released, and that'll give you a little better control. Sometimes I've had students where they get all their neighbors and their uh, people painting next to them, so you really have to be careful with that. Okay, a little light on the sand. Sand has a tendency sometimes to sparkle when the sun's hit it. So I'm gonna add a little basic, which is my already softened white, a little touch of ochre in it, and some thinner. The thinner is naturally gonna allow the paint to release more easily. And let's put a few little specks of light. I think if you're coming real close, you can really see those little dots, how it almost gives a little shine to the painting. And of course, I wouldn't want to paint these on one at a time with a liner brush dot by dot, so this is definitely the easiest way to do that. We have specialty brushes. My fan brush is my favorite for big clumps of grasses, but I think I'll use, start with my fan brush, and then I'll show you a little specialty mini fan brush that'll allow that to pull up even more easily. You notice I'm not putting the paints on thick and heavy. My preference is a creamy, easy moving paint that allows me to build slowly and then I can continually add, rather than putting on, you know, thick, heavy paint early. Let's go up and create little grass clumps. We'll just tap a little paint on and gently lift it. And notice the contrast area. Maybe a little patch over here in the shadow, and we'll develop that. Maybe one right here in front of the pot. I'm watching value changes that happen. I leave a little light behind it, and I place them, I would call it randomly, but then again, also sometimes carefully trying not to get them too detailed at this early stage because I want to pull up some kind of those little oats uh, that affects. Your little mini fan brush will give you a little more control of delicate lines. You won't find it's softer and it'll move the paint a little more differently, but you still need soft paint. So I'm using this mini fan brush and if you come in real close and tight in here, I think we'll put a, uh, right down here in this area, if we come in real tight with a tight shot, I think you'll be able to see me lift up a few little delicate little grasses. Just touch the brush with a little, I tell the ladies, it's just like painting your eyelashes. You have a very gentle little stroke. You don't use a lot of pressure, but I tell the men they're just gonna have to wing it and uh, use their imagination to create these type of effects. Now, this is the dark foundation. I'm going to use light colors that are thin to maybe create a little highlight. You could put a little greenery in it, but I'm keeping this very much in the earth tones. A little more of an ochre color now. In the shadows, you wouldn't see much light. Okay, let's use the liner brush one more time and stretch some of these and make it maybe a few little oat type effects. There are all sorts of grasses out west and you can uh, study and research. I've researched a lot of this work so I uh, can keep it uh, authentic, but you can also 
uh, take a little artist liberties and have some fun with some of the techniques. Notice how the paint is thin and it moves easily, and sometimes I get thin colors or dark colors. Other times I get light colors. We need to put that little stick over here. Let's go over and add the little stick. Just a touch of some dark brown. And where that shadow is, I'm going to just bring that little basic stick up. Now, in the pattern, I've gotten gone over this. I could take a number 16 and wipe out all of my design that I didn't want. I need a little highlight. And lift off the paint in that coloring using a paper towel. Or you can take your... Uh, uh, and wait and let it dry and go back over it with your magic marker. A little touch of a shimmer on the pot will bring it a little bit alive. And I didn't get my oats in this time, but I won't have time. I think if you experiment with the patterns in the pot, you'll have a lot of fun. I sure hope you enjoyed this one. I sure enjoy doing it for you. Goodbye. To get your Paint with Petard 2 step-by-step instructional guide by Lynn Petard, send 1495 check or money order to Paint with Petard 2. P.O. Box 1713, Department G, Delray Beach, Florida, 33483, or call 1-800-942-4000. Please have your MasterCard, Visa, or American Express card handy. That's 1495, check or money order to Paint with Petard 2, P.O. Box 1713, Department G, Delray Beach, Florida, 33483. Price includes postage and handling. This 72-page full-color guide contains the 13 paintings shown in this series. During the week, you can brush up those painting skills on the joy of painting with Bob Ross. That's every weekday afternoon at 2.30, right here on Channel 2. Stay with us now. Good cooking next with Boston's own Julia Child and the Victory Garden at 4.30. Good TV. It's always up to you. Just try. Paint with Petard 2 with Lynn Petard was made possible by a grant from Lang. Local broadcast of Painting with Petard is made possible by our members in partnership with the Prescott House Nursing Home, located in North Andover, Massachusetts, and owned and operated by the Solomon family. And with the Magic Touch Art Studio in Maynard, Massachusetts, owned and operated by Chuck O'Neill. Here at WGBH, our goal is to make every family a member of our family. But we're still one family short, and guess who's missing? That's right, you. Only you can help guarantee that WGBH will continue to bring your family the very best that television has to offer. So please join our family today. Rush your check to WGBH, Boston 02134, or call 492-1111. And thank you.